In this presentation, we're going to set up and analyze the function of purposes within our accounting software. The purposes are going to be similar or serve a similar function as the items like inventory items and service items in a for-profit organization. Get ready, because here we go with Applos. Here we are on our not-for-profit organization dashboard. Last time we were over here in the accounting section, we set up our chart of accounts and we set up our tags. Now we're gonna be going into the donations section. We're gonna go into the donations. This is gonna be our revenue type of, se of, of section if you're thinking about this as a comparison to a for-profit type of organization. This is how we're gonna be generating revenue with those donations. A couple things we need with those donations, of course, is to track those donations and be able to record them from an accounting standpoint. So we, we want to record them from an accounting standpoint, track them so that we can give the donation reporting to uh, the donors as well. So to do this, if you if you think about this, it's similar to a for-profit organization where you're going to have uh, the, the donations happening or in a for-profit, you're going to have revenue, right? And the revenue, you have service items and inventory items. So when people give you money for a for-profit, it's because you gave them something typically as being a service or goods. When we talk about the not-for-profit organization, we have a similar process, a similar, we need a similar type of transaction document. Now the transaction documents for a for-profit are going to be the invoice and something like a sales receipt that you can imagine giving at the point in time of, of, the, don of the transaction happening. So like at a cash register, you get a receipt, a sales receipt type of transaction. So when we go in and when we, when we think about accounting software, oftentimes you think in terms of forms such as that. The forms are the things that are oftentimes will be generating the actual reporting on the accounting side. So from like a QuickBooks standpoint, the invoice would be generating the revenue transaction and the uh, sales receipt form would be generating the revenue transaction if it was a if it was a cash transaction or non cash transaction here we're going to be calling that uh, we're going to and to drive those then it depends on what we sell like the service item that we sell so we actually set up these service items to help us to easily populate things such as the invoice and the sales receipt in a for-profit organization well, here we need to set up a similar thing in that we're going to have contributions, which is kind of like the sales receipt. People just gave us money. Uh, and so similar to a transaction happening, but it's a donation. We didn't give anything back except our time. And then they gave us uh, money. That's going to be a, a, a donation, which is kind of like a sales receipt you might see in a, in a QuickBooks type of setup. And then pledges are going to be similar to kind of like an invoice because a, an invoice would mean that we did work. We built someone haven't got to paid yet. So a pledge would be the same thing. They're promising to pay us in the future. Again, we didn't do work necessarily, right? It's a donation in the future. They're pledging the, to give us money at some point in the future. All right, so that for to do that, to populate those forms, we want to set up something similar to service items, something similar. If we did bookkeeping or landscaping, we might set up the service item as, you know, our landscaping service or this or that. Uh, if we sold inventory, then we'd have the inventory items. So we're going to be setting up then our purposes over here that'll help us to populate the, the forms for the major revenue forms like the contribution and pledges. So we're going to go to purposes up top, purposes, so we're under donations and then purposes. We have two are the defaults here. So we got in-kind donations. I'm going to go ahead and delete the second one. You can see it's not linked to anything at this point. I'm going to delete that one. I think that's kind of an example one. So you know you could delete that. Then you have the, the general purpose. That's going to be our, our default kind of donation. So I'm going to go into the general purpose. And you can keep, you could expect this to be like the norm, right? So if our, if our organization, our organization is, is, has two goals, we've got the education and we've got the community service. Now, if someone just gives us money, then we expect that we can spend them that money any way we want in order to achieve those objectives that we have, which are our programs. And then of course the supporting uh, necessities of the admin and whatnot in fundraising in order to support those programs. So I'm going to say general basically means that, right? If, we, if we're using just general, people just gave us money. They say, hey, I know what you, you know your objective. You could spend the money in any way you want. And uh, here it is, as long as it's going into your, you know the purpose that you have set up the, the uh, not-for-profit to be doing. And so, and then of course, if they give us money and put restrictions on it, that's when we're going to have restricted items. So the so the general item would be uh, most used. That would be what we would hope to be most used. People would be giving us money for our not-for-profit purpose and not giving us any further restrictions on how to use that beyond 
the, the use of our not-for-profit. So I'm going to keep the name general description. We're going to say general purpose. And then I'm going to scroll on down and you'll note that uh, the accounts now pick the account 400. And that is um, actually uh, the, the restricted account. So I think it was 410. Uh, 4010 uh, is it contributions restricted now no you don't really have a drop down when you first start but if you start typing in like four thousands that's where the income start items are so if I just put a four then I can then get our, our information or if I was to start to type in uh, contributions we'll start to get the drop down and that should give us enough to, to populate this so I'm gonna say four zero one zero and then the fund that we're going to put this in is going to be unrestricted. So we can imagine when we use this, then when we use this to populate our contributions forms, the contributions form itself will generally usually increase the cash account. That's going to be usually what a you know contribution form does. You know, cash is going to be going up. We got a contribution. The other side of the transaction, from a journal entry standpoint, is going to go into this account four zero one zero contribution unrestricted when we use this kind of like item, kind of like a service item, this general purpose contribution service item. And then uh, if we go into the fund, it's going to be increasing. You can imagine the income statement being broken out to the two columns now, those two columns being restricted and unrestricted. It's going to be going to the unrestricted column here. That's what the general uh, kind of contributions will do. So I'm going to say save and then we'll have that. So there it is. You can see it's kind of linked up. So we have everything uh, linked up there. So now what's going to happen is when we go to the contributions, which we'll do in a future presentation, we'll say we're going to make a, a contributions, drop down contributions. Then we can add a new one. I'm going to say add a new contribution. I'm not going to complete this one. I just want to basically uh, show it here. Now, when you see a contribution, eventually the contribution, again, is going to be going, it's cash going up. It's going to go into the bank account at some point in time. So we'd have the contact, which is basically a customer or donor, we would say. Then uh, the purpose, we can select a purpose here, and this is where I'm going to put the general. All we have right now is the general, meaning the donations are just going to be the general donations. We'll put in more donation uh, restrictions later for restricted donations if someone gives us money and restricts it in some way. But right now, we're going to say a donation is just going to be picking that general. That means that when we do the contribution, basically, journal entry standpoint, cash is going to go up. This thing is kind of like the item for like a QuickBooks, which is going to be driving the other side of the transaction, which means it's going to be going into that income account, the income account that's unrestricted. And then we also said through this line item that that general category is going to be going to the unrestricted, uh, unrestricted category or fund, which will allow us to break out between restricted and unrestricted on the income statement. So you'll see how easy it is then to make this contribution form. If someone was to give us a contribution, you know, you don't need any expertise to just basically fill this out. Why? Because we've already set up all the difficult components. We've set up how to uh, put the, you've set up the general ledger account, the funds, and then any tags. And then we set up these items, which are kind of like the inventory or service items for a not-for-profit organization. So that the collection of the donations, very easy. You just enter the contact and you can enter this information, the transaction uh, should uh, take place and, and uh, record itself. And we'll talk more about uh, completing this form later. And then th at the end, we don't need to know anything about the setup process to do the data input. That's the goal. Someone who's collecting donations, we don't want them to have to know how the setup process happened or how the, how the reports are going to be affected, which we discussed, you know, how the two columns and broken out like that. All that's going to be set up given our, our setup factor with the funds being set up correctly and now these items. So these are the critical building blocks to get the thing working right so that the data input will be easy. So we'll talk more about data input in a future presentation.